everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Tyne. It's Sunday, Easter Sunday at 8.30am in the morning and I'm up super early and ready and Chester's just jumped onto the desk which he never usually does or rarely. Let's see if we can spot him. No, he's just here. <laughs> There's his tail. <laughs> Hi Chester. This is unusual. Oh, he's just spotted a birdie out of the window if you can hear him. Ziggy's here too. So I thought I'd just pop on and say good morning and let you know what I've got planned for the day. Today's plan, um, other than having waffles for breakfast, which I'm very excited about, is I've got to cut out a paper pattern for the Burnside bibs. I made them about a year and a half ago at a size 10 and I now need to cut out a size 16 to 18 so I've had the pattern printed again from net printer and I'm going to get that cut out today that's my project for Lamarzi fabrics I'm also going to sew up the Bertha cardigan so I thought I would take you along with that it's the Bertha cardigan from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book I've made one already I'm making another one in a gorgeous star print sweater knit from First for Fabrics I had planned on making the version with the pockets but I've just read through the instructions and it says to be really careful if you're using a thicker fabric and that fabric is thicker. So I may leave those off because I'm not sure my sewing machine and my overlocker are going to enjoy sewing through that many layers of fabric. So I may leave the pockets off but I am going to do the thumb hole cuffs. So I thought I would take you along with me in making the Bertha cardigan with the thumb hole cuffs and you can see how quickly it comes together. <laughs> oh, we watched Avatar last night. It's a film that came out, I think, 11 years ago and was, you know, raved about, but I've never actually seen it. And Sam has subscribed us to Disney Plus. So we now have access to many, many films and series and Avatar was on there. So we watched that last night and it was brilliant. It was just visually stunning, absolutely incredible. And I don't often watch a whole film because I tend to fall asleep. But last night I watched the whole film. It kept my interest for the whole film. So yeah, I absolutely loved it. The other thing I thought I'd tell you is I've just started a new book and it's this one, which is Happy Mum, Happy Baby by Giovanna Fletcher. G is married to Tom Fletcher who is in a band called McFly so I'm not sure if you've heard of them so yeah she's written this book Happy Mum Happy Baby and I'm really excited to read this and learn more about her experience of being a mum because I do have these <laughs> moments of panic where I think I have no idea how to be a parent none whatsoever and in 11 weeks 11 weeks 11 weeks I will be one <laughs> and I just think wow what do I do but I'm hoping a lot of it will come naturally and it'll come with just the experience and I know that people say everyone will give you advice and you just have to take what you want from it and then do your own version because every child is different and everybody's experience is different so yeah those moments of panic are now becoming few and far between, I have to say. I'm just very excited at the moment about being a mum. I mean, I already feel like one, but then I do have these moments where I think, wow, do I know what to do? So I'm going to enjoy reading this and see if she felt the same <laughs> and see what her experiences have been. I think that's all. I think I might go and wake Sam up. Oh, actually, I think he's awake, but I'm going to go and annoy him <laughs> and ask when he's going to make me some waffles so I will catch up with you a little bit later. Hi um so I said I'll be taking you along with sewing the Bertha cardigan today but I ended up doing quite a bit of sleeping instead. <laughs> I did cut out the paper pattern that I was talking about for a different project but I then slept for two hours I was just really really tired so yeah 12 until 2 today I slept and it's now 5 p.m. I've just been helping Sam with editing my snippets video, the last one. So that's going up today, which is Sunday. <laughs> so I've now come to the Bertha cardigan. So I think I was saying that I'm making 
the Bertha out of the star print jacquard sweater knit from First of Fabrics. I don't think I'm going to do the pockets because I think the fabric layers will be too thick to sew through but if I have got enough fabric left over once I've cut all the other pieces out I might cut the pockets out and just see how I get on but I'm doing the cuff now because I want to do the thumb hole cuff so what you have to do is draw a new pattern piece or extend your existing pattern piece but I'm just drawing a new one it needs to be 30 centimeters long so I've just got a sheet of A4 paper which is just short of 30 centimeters I'm just going to use that and then the width of it has to be the width of your sleeve five eighths up from the bottom of the where it joins onto the cuff so I'm just measuring that now I've just marked it on my pattern piece and I'm just going to measure and see how wide that is exactly 10 inches so that's like 25 and a half centimeters so ah yeah a piece of A4 paper is not wide enough <laughs> let's find another piece of A4 paper Pritt stick <laughs> I'm just going to join two pieces together I could have just used pattern paper but I'm being lazy because that's downstairs and this is here two pieces joined together so let's mark on the measurements that we want 10 inches wide and we want 30 centimetres long, which I can do now exactly because I've joined these two pieces of paper together. There we go. Then I'm just going to use a ruler. Join those marks up. We have 30 centimetres by 10 inches. I'm going to cut that out. So we want four thumb hole notches along each of the long edges so you want it at eight centimeters and 14 centimeters from each end Right, so I've made my pattern piece now and you can see, I think I showed the camera that all of the markings and the information is on there. I need to cut two of those. So I think I'm gonna go and cut out the pieces I need for my cardigan. So I'll take you along with me to do that. Just one little quick note before I go and do this. I always think when I'm cutting out, cause I cut out on the floor and I mean at the minute obviously I'm pregnant and not all movement is as easy as it always was. I just think I must look really ungraceful <laughs> when I'm cutting out so apologies for that but needs must. <laughs> right I'm off to cut. <laughs> So you just saw me cutting out the cardigan. I've got it all here, ready. I didn't have enough for the pockets. I mean, I might have done if I'd have been slightly more careful about pattern placement, but I ended up having to cut the last two pieces, the sleeve and the neckband on a single layer because I was struggling to fit them on. So yeah, I'm not gonna have any pockets, but I'm gonna have the thumb hole cuffs, which I'm excited about. I'm actually gonna leave it there for today because it's now quarter to seven. We're going to go and cook some food and watch a film, I think. I think Sam wants to watch Star Wars, so that's the plan. So I will come back to you tomorrow and we'll get this sewn up. Right, see you later. Hi, it is now Monday and I'm ready to start sewing up the Bertha cardigan. So I thought I would take you along with me as a sew and we'll see how quickly this can come together. It shouldn't take very long at all, really. The only bit I think that'll take a little bit longer is the cuffs, because I'm doing the thumbhole cuffs, and they require 
a few more stages in the sewing process. But other than that, pretty much the whole thing can be done on the overlocker. Now my overlocker was already set up with four different colours of thread, which actually tie in quite nicely with the colours that are in the fabric I'm using for the cardigan. So remember, this is the fabric I'm using, which is the star print jacquard sweater knit. And then the overlocker thread I'm using, I shall show you now, are these four colours. So this is the left hand needle and this is the colour that will show through if any shows through at all and that's very similar to the background colour of the fabric I'm using and then these colours are all in the fabric as well so I'm not going to bother changing my overlocker threads because I'm quite happy with that. So the first step in making the cardigan is to get your back bodice and sleeves. So let's find those. Right, so we're going to lay our back bodice right side up. We're then going to lay the sleeves right side up next to the back bodice, matching up the notches. Now the notches aren't very clear, so I've got two notches there and I've got two notches there. So that one matches up on that side. Two notches, two notches matches up on that side. Right, so in front of me, I've got my back bodice and my two sleeves all right side up, laying alongside each other. And now I'm going to flip over my sleeve so that it's now wrong side up, but right side towards the back bodice right side. I'm going to match these sides up and I'm going to clip them together. It's one side done. Do the same on the other side. I always clip the bit, the notched bit of the fabrics first, get those lined up. Then I line up the top edge and then the bottom edge and then just put a couple of clips in between. We are up to the point now where we're going to overlock the sleeves onto the back bodice. So we do that at five eighths of an inch seam allowance, which I've got marked up on my overlocker. And let's do that. So despite those two layers of fabric being quite thick, my overlocker has managed that really, really well. So that's the overlocked edge. Then from the other side, doesn't pull you can't see any of the stitches through so I'm going to do the same on the other sleeve right the next step is going to be to do the same with the front bodice pieces so to attach those to the other side of each sleeve but I like to actually press my seams as I go I know it will probably save time if I batch pressed but I quite like to press them as I go so I'm just going to go and do that so I've pressed the seam allowance towards the sleeves and I'm now going to attach my front bodice pieces to the sleeves. So right sides together, matching notches, I'm going to clip this front bodice piece on to the sleeve, one done, and let's do the other side and they're ready to overlock as well. Right, that's the bodice, sleeves and front bodice all joined together and I've pressed all of those seams as well. So next step is to make and attach the hem band. So let's find our hem band, which is this one. So you need to fold the hem band in half lengthways with wrong sides together and press the fold. So that's what we're going to do. So this is our wrong side, just going to fold it wrong sides together and press all the way along there and then it tells you to press the seams on the raglan sleeves but I've already done that and then we're going to be pinning this to or clipping to our cardigan so I'll go and press the fold and then 
clip this along the bottom and I'll come back to you. So I just went to clip my hem band onto the cardigan and I thought something was a bit odd and that's because I missed out a step. <laughs> so I need to actually sew the sleeves and the side seams together on each side before I can attach my hem band. So it's a good job I stopped. Well I couldn't really have gone much further without doing that step. So I'm going to do that now. So that means right sides together I'm going to put my sleeve and my side seams together there and I'm just going to overlock I'm going to do that on both sides so let's clip that that was me racing ahead thinking god this is so easy I mean it is a really easy pattern comes together really nicely I have made one of these before if you remember using the hair print French terry from Lamazi. One side done and the other side done so I'll overlock these now. Right so that's overlocked now and I'm going to go and press that just to say if every time I sort of move between filming the overlocker and then filming me again if I'm in a slightly different frame it's because I can't do the tripod properly <laughs> I can't get it in the same position every time so it's something we'll just have to deal with right I'm going to go and press those seams towards the back right so I've pressed those now towards the back and just to show you what I use for getting into the sleeves I use this so a sleeve ham or a sleeve roll it might be called. I'll link this one down below, it's just from Amazon. So I use that to put into the sleeve so I can press the seam on top of there. Right, so now we're on to attaching the hem band. So I'm going to put my cardigan the right sides out and I'd already pressed the fold because I did it earlier and now I can just match up the notches and attach it with clips along the bottom of the cardigan. I love using clips for this sort of thing it's just I find it so much quicker and easier than pins and also much better for using with the overlocker because a pin is very easy to miss as you put your sewing through the overlocker whereas a clip isn't so you can easily snap the blade of your overlocker by going over a pin whereas these you can't really miss them so I always remember to take them out. Now this is going to be three layers of this fabric so hopefully my overlocker is going to like it and not get stressed out. Fingers crossed. So I've done one end and then I've matched the notch up with the first seam allowance. So I'm going to go along to the other end and do the same and then work into the middle. Right, that is clipped all the way along. When I clipped where the seam is between the front bodice and the back bodice I made sure that I clipped down the seam allowance in the direction that I wanted it to go so towards the back and as I go through that bit on the overlocker I just use my finger to help obviously watching the blade so I'm going to overlock that now fingers crossed <laughs> that my overlocker can cope with three layers of this fabric The amount of fabric coming off in the overlock in a bin it's crazy right the next step is going to be the neckband but I'm actually going to go and press this like I said I like to press as I go and when you first take it off the overlocker especially because it's quite thick it looks quite sort of curved and wavy so I'm going to go and use a really steamy iron to press that out and make it nice and flat and then it's going to be neckband time. It's coming together so nicely. So we've got our hem band attached. So we've got a pretty wearable cardigan so far but we're on to the neckband. So we need to get our neckband pieces which are these two and we're going to lay them right sides together 
and pin them along the triangular shaped centre back ends. So that's these two ends here. And we're going to stitch those together. I'm going to do it on my overlocker still because I can manoeuvre to get those two diagonal lines. Right, I'm just going to go and press that. And then we need to fold the neckband lengthways right sides together, right sides together. And then stitch or overlock each short end. So overlock these two short ends. It's one done. And the other one done. So I'm going to go and press that center seam to one side and then we're going to turn this all right sides out. I'm just going to use my point turner to get into that corner. To be honest it's pressed out quite nicely. Do the same on the other side. You could also use a pin to ease out the corner but mine's come out quite nicely like that. And then we're going to press the whole thing wrong sides together just like we did with the hem band. I'll go and do that. So that's done. So I'm going to clip this onto the cardigan, but just to point out that if your fabric is patterned like mine, but the pattern is quite spaced out like mine is, you want to decide which side of your neckband you want to be facing outwards. So I've got this side, which is very yellow. Nearly all of the stars that are shown are the yellow ones. Or I've got the other side where I've got some yellow and some pink. So I've decided that's going to be my right side. So I want that bit to be showing out. So that's the side that's going to clip towards the right side of my cardigan. So I'm going to start by lining up the centre back with this pointy bit. And then I'm going to come down and line up the very end with the very end of my cardigan. Oh, I've got four layers of fabric to get through my overlocker there clip can barely manage to get on. Then we've got some notches to match up. So there's one on the front bodice piece. That's all I think. So I'll do the other side. Again doing the ends first. Right that's all clipped all the way along and I'm going to take that to my overlocker now just to point out that when you're going over again when you're going over the seam allowances make sure that you can sort of just help with your finger to press that the way that you want it to be sewn so that our seam allowances are all going in the direction that we want them to. So I'll go and do this. Right, I've attached the neckband, but my overlocker had a little bit of a stress halfway through. So it was at the centre back seam point. It just got a bit tangled. One of the bits of fabric that it was trying to cut off with the blade kind of worked its way backwards through the overlocker rather than dropping into the bin at the front. So I, I decided to just stop sewing. I freed that bit of fabric, I cut it out, I cut the threads and I re-threaded the overlocker. And then I just started again from that centre back seam down the other side. So my neckband is all attached now. So I'm just gonna go and give that a really, really good press with some steam. Then I've just got one little bit left to do on that which is to do a few zigzag stitches just at the front here to anchor that seam allowance down to the rest of the cardigan and then I'm going to work on the cuffs but I'm starting to feel a bit tired and I've got a headache so I actually think I'm going to go and take a little nap and then do the cuffs because I don't want to make a mistake. So I'm going to press this first though and then it's nap time. Then I'll come back to you when it's time to do the cuffs. Hi, I'm back. Sorry if I look a bit dishevelled <laughs> since the last time I spoke to you, but I've been having a lie down. Um, I, think I had, was there for about two hours. Maybe managed to sleep a little bit, but not an awful lot. And then I woke up just with a lot of pain in my back because I'd slept in an awkward position. But what can we do? I've still got a little bit of a headache. Not ideal. So I need to keep guzzling water. So we're onto the cuffs and you can actually see, if I just move there, <laughs> the cardigan in the background. So 
On page 142 in the Make It Simple book are the instructions for sewing up the thumb hole cuffs. So I've got a cuff piece here, I've got two of those. I need to fold this cuff in half lengthways. So that's that way, right sides together, bringing the notched side seams together, which I've done there. And we're going to sew basically three lines of stitching down that long end, but missing out where the thumb holes will be. So we're gonna sew down to that notch, then we're going to miss out a bit, we're going to sew in between two notches there, miss a bit and then sew this last bit. So let's just put some clips in, matching up our notches and I'm going to clip in so I know which bit I'm sewing and which bit I'm not. Right, so here we go, we're sewing this bit, not this bit. We're sewing this tiny little bit here, not this bit. We're sewing this bit at the end. We need a 5 8 seam allowance. We also need a zigzag stitch. And we need to back stitch at the start and at the end of each little bit so that it doesn't rip open. It's the first one done. Then we're going to miss this bit here and go to the next notch. It's only a small one, this one. It's a middle one done, and then we're going to miss out the next section. Right, that is one cuff done. So we've got our holes in there and there. So I'm just going to do the same on the other side. So we need to press the seam allowances open on there, so I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to trim off the ends of my thread as well. I know they'll be on the inside but I just, I can't deal. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear some sounds like a man's voice downstairs. Sam's listening to a podcast quite loud. <laughs> So um, if you can, that's what it is. Right, I'm going to press those seam allowances open. Right, so next step is we're going to fold the cuff in half widthways, wrong sides together. So I've just put my hand in there and I'm going to fold this bottom bit up towards the top. Right, just to help me for a minute, I'm going to put a couple of clips in. Right, I'm going to take these clips off now. So it says, hold the seam allowances on one side of the thumb hole so they're together inside the cuff. So I've got that now and it says reach inside the cuff with your other hand and pinch these seam allowances together from the inside and then we're going to pull them out so the wrong side out let's see there we go again i'm just going to put a couple of clips in just one clip will do it actually Right, so here is where I want to sew and we're going to do a zigzag stitch with a half inch seam allowance. Being careful not to catch any of the other layers in the stitching. I'm just going to use my tape measure to just check where half an inch would be. It's just slightly inside my five eighths. So I'm going to sew that little bit at that seam allowance. We're going down to the notch again. Right, fingers crossed this has worked. Again, I'm just snipping off my loose threads because I don't like them. So we've stitched just in between there. I'm now going to turn the cuff 
the right way out again. This should be some sort of magic. It is magic. So turning it right side out. And I'm just going to put a clip in the top there just to help me get it all straightened out. Right, so we've got our cuff. And then here is the thumb hole. You can see this is the side that I've stitched. This is the side that I haven't. So this is what I need to do now. So I'm going to take that clip out. I'm going to just pinch those two seams together. I'm going to reach my hand inside and grab those two seam allowances and then turn it inside out so I've got access to those. Then I'm just going to put a clip, clip in where the notch is. So I'm going to start here where that little notch is and I'm going to sew down to there again a half an inch. Come on then. You can come and help Ziggy. Just checking that I'm only sewing through those two layers and nothing else. Moment of truth. So we're going to turn it out to the right side. It's my iron. <laughs> Ziggy's now crying at the door downstairs to go into the kitchen. She just loves to be with us, it's really lovely. Right, there we go. Try and get rid of some of that sound. It's an Oxford United football podcast. Right, oh, look at this. There we go. How cool is that? So there's your cuff, there's your little thumb hole. Ah, oh, I love it. Right, this is a good idea that it suggests to do a little bar tack at the end of each hole. So at the end here, and at the end here, to do a little bar tack to just secure it so it doesn't come loose. So it suggests five millimeters wide by 0 0.7 to one millimeter long. Let's go with one. And let's do that bar tack. There, you may be able to see or you may not, but it's just going to secure that a little bit and stop it from coming loose. So let's do that at the other end as well. There we go. We've got our thumb hole nice and secure as well. So I'm now going to go and repeat all of that on the other side with this other cuff and then I'll come back to you to attach them on to the cardigan at the end and that's the last step. Hi I've come back so I did the other cuff our online food order arrived so I went down to help Sam bring that in and then I did a little bit more and I forgot that I was supposed to be filming so all I've done is the bar tacks at the bottom of each side of the neckband and then on this side my bottom edges here didn't quite match up there was a slight difference between them so all I did was use some hand stitching to bring this edge in line with this edge and sort of took it over to the other side and secured it in with some hand stitching and that worked really well so happy with that we're now up to attaching the cuffs so what I need to do is get to the end of my sleeve and I need to get a cuff. Now, I want this to be the outside of my cuff. So I'm just going to flip it the other way to attach it so it's right sides together. I'm going to slide that over. I'm going to line up the seam with the seam of the cuff first. I'm just going to clip this round. All right, so I've clipped that all the way around. And then I'll need to overlock that. I'm just going to clip the other one while I'm here. Save a little bit of time. Okay, I'm just going to go and overlock those at five eighths and then I'll come back to you. Right, I've attached my cuffs with the overlocker. It actually coped really well. I just had to sort of help feed it through a little bit with my fingers. Again, being careful of the blade. 
as it was going through all those layers where the seams were but other than that it's coped really well as you can see it's quite wavy so I'm going to go and really press it with a steamy iron and then I'll come back to you with it on I think so I'll go and change this top into something that will look a bit better underneath actually this might look all right I'll see I'll come back to you wearing my birthday cardigan So there we go, I'm finished. Got my thumb holes, which I love. The sleeves are probably slightly long, but actually I really love the oversized slouchy feel of this. I can just wrap myself up in it and I love it. It feels like a blanket, like I'm wearing a blanket, which is amazing. So I'm really, really happy with my finished cardigan. I think depending on what sort of look you're going for with the Bertha cardigan. I would maybe size down or size up. I made a straight size six and that was what matched up with my measurements. Obviously I'm pregnant at the moment so my measurements are larger than they would have been previously. Pre prior to getting pregnant I was always a Tilly sized four so I'm up to a six at the moment and that is absolutely fine because obviously my body's changed. <laughs> and this is definitely, I think the Bertha definitely is an oversized slouchy pattern anyway but if you're not going for that look you might want a size down because you might want something a bit more fitted and well, it's never going to be fitted as such but just a bit snugger whereas this is very much like I've just wrapped a blanket around me but that is what I want I'm very happy so I'm going to finish this video here I hope you've enjoyed following along with me making the Bertha cardigan please let me know down below have you made it yet or are you planning to make it I'm going to go and hang out with Sam I think I've got some Pringles <laughs> not sponsored uh, yeah I've got some Pringles I did order prawn cocktail but they substituted them to salt and vinegar but actually that's absolutely fine I'm very happy I've got my Pringles I've got my water I'm set up so I'm gonna go and hang out with Sam he's making us dinner we're having chili and sweet potato wedges so I'm very excited and we'll watch something on the TV maybe a film on Disney plus or something like that so thank you very much for following along with me Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in my next video. <laughs> Happy sewing. Bye. Oh, I love my little thumb holes. <laughs> Simple things.